I got a question for you since we're on this. Dealing with death at a young age. I, I did also. I had, you know, my father passed, but I was I was already 14, uh, 14, almost 15. You were much younger. Now, when I was young, I was nine, I think, when my, or 10, my favorite uncle committed suicide. So it was a, a sudden and violent revelation to a yeah, little that's a kid. Different, that's a different world. But hold on. Did you because of your father's death, begin to have this preoccupation with the mystery of death? Absolutely. Like, I, I don't fucking see how you went can't. there so early. Like, I'd see an ambulance, and I'd be like, was that the one he was in? Is his blood still in there? Like, I know that sounds morbid to people, but when you're a kid, so I was wondering if you kind of Yeah, went there. no, I, and, like, I'm so old, <laughs> The ambulance, when it came to your house, was basically just a station wagon. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first, like the first person that died on our neighborhood was was Mrs. Mrs. Ketter. She's and gone. She, she had a stroke. Fuck. And they went like Superior Ambulance was the you know the Detroit area ambulance company. I said I think they still are, one of, but they came to the end of the road, you know, to, and they. She came, like, they went in to work on her, you know, in 60 fucking six, probably. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they, they did, you know. Give her a shot of penicillin. Uh, <laughs> She's probably just hungry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, that's no, the Italian was, ambulance. Was, She's was just the hungry. Yeah. Give us some food. Maybe for a baguette. So, uh, but anyway, when she came out, her hand was like laying like outside of the, the mm -hmm. covering and it was already like turning color. And you never, oh and boy, that no, burns man, right in, bro. Just that fucking, just that whole, and them kind of jerking to get the wheels up, like back up. And I'm like, ugh. And then to watch your own son on a backboard get wheeled out of your house into the back of a fucking ambulance. Well, that's totally I mean, different yeah but i'm just saying right it's just like as, one, one, once you get you know once you decide to play the death game i mean i, I think it's what is more um thought-provoking than that because the whole christian uh belief system is based on that you know, it's based on internal life. Mm -hmm. That because God was, God created Christ in His image, and He He can uh, absolve us of sin, and God gave His Son up on the cross so we could have eternal life. So, I mean, and then as a youngster, it it. Oh, as a youngster, it preoccupies fact, I, you. I I just knew because my dad went to church, and my dad always put a couple of beans in the pot. So I was figuring, oh, the old man's smart, man. He went ahead, you know. He did the. Uh, he invested. Yeah, he, he he got in ground floor. I was. I remember uh, my uh, this the uncle in question. He. Um, he jumped off a building, and he, I, the twenty third floor was the top floor, and he lived with my grandfather. He didn't work for Trump, did he? No, <laughs> nope. Oh God, I forgot. Him. And like from football after football practice, when we'd sit in the bleachers of the stadium, and like get our notes or whatever they called it. But yeah, I played football. You fuck, I know. It was just a couple of years, but I could see all the way across the city on the Hudson River their building and like the sun would sometimes it would be evening or sun was going down and it would hit like that top floor and I'd see it and I should be sitting there enjoying football practice listening to the coach or whatever but I'm looking at the building that he jumped off of and I'm and, and that and I'm there and when I go to when I walk in a parade as a boy scout and I see the ambulance I already told you that's I went to the ambulance it just preoccupies so much of you and uh, could you imagine I had a dream there's a uh a place down here called the Peck Tower. It's a round building. I think it's the tallest building down there. I want to think it's 32 or 33 floors. 
There might be one that down in, da in Daytona Beach proper that's, but um, I had a dream once. They have a revolving, well, they used to have a revolving restaurant on the top of it. And the dream was that I fell out of this fucking, I was like leaning back on the window and the window just fucking like popped open that way and I went back and like slow motion mm. and I fucking hit and I fucking, it was like, bam, and I could feel it. Holy shit. Like I could feel it in my dream how hard I hit. And I'm like, I'm, I'm laying there, and I'm like, oh, fuck, man, I'm alive. It's, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> and I fucking, I, I kind of get my fucking wits about me, and I look, and fucking one of my legs is like laying over there. Oh, wow. And I look down, and I'm missing my leg, and I'm missing this fucking hand. Like, like it fucking like I'm all fucked. I'm I'm just destroyed. How old were you when you would have these? Oh no, I had this. I had this dream fucking like ten years ago, and fucking just woke up out of bed like ah. Oh! I was just like fuck, and now it's like I'll have dreams where fucking in my dream I'll I'll get someplace I'll be on a ledge or something. And like my fucking subconscious would be like, dude, we already know what happens when you fall. Get from the other dream. <laughs> yeah, like it tells me, like it, it tells me I'm probably not get, going into REM sleep, but I can control my fucking mental thoughts when I'm unconscious. That leaning back at the restaurant, going out the window, and falling twenty stories is almost as bad an experience as Hyde Park when we ate there. Uh, We're gonna try it again. Yeah, that, we'll try it again. <clears throat> gotta give it. Gotta give it round two. Yeah. So it, it'll be it on me, so I don't have any guilt this time. I want you to meet my kids too, man. I want to meet your kids. Yeah. Um, I want, I want to meet the star. Yeah. Fucking me out again tonight, man. <clears throat> we're we're gonna get this goddamn Betty. It's coming right the fuck for us. Is it really? <sighs> yeah. I'm looking at the path. It's probably it, it'll be done by. I think it'll be done by early Saturday. So my flight out is it, Sunday. Hopefully, it's, it's been a motherfucker, out. man. It's it's summer. What we deal with in summer. But yeah. speaking of summer, I saw you in the Legends box at Summer Slam. Much to my chagrin. Well, it wasn't to your chagrin. You were there. I think the schedule no, might have been to your chagrin. No, I, I I loved being there. I was, and um, I loved being a part of the event. It's just. It's just mind-boggling to me. It's mind-boggling to sit in a box and look out, and if I didn't know better, put it this way, they did 57,791 people for SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. 